Christmas! Merry Christmas, one and all! As you can see, I'm back home to celebrate with my family, enjoying each other's time, the food, the fattening holiday food, and what really matters, material goods. Are you ready for yours? <laughs> of course you are. Come, come, sit, sit. So you may have noticed I just wrapped up on reviewing all 62 of the original Goosebumps series by R.L. Stein. But along the way, I was asked to do a top 10 at the end. Unfortunately, I just didn't schedule it in for me to make it possible. But the latest Goosebumps book is set during Christmas time. And I don't know about you, but I'm getting sick and tired of Christmas marching into Halloween's territory. I think a little payback is in order. So have you guessed what your present is yet? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all ages, my name is David Popovich, aka The Bookworm, and welcome to Bookworm's Top 13 Goosebumps Books of the Original Series. Some ground rules. One, I'm not ranking them in numerical order. I'll still point to which ones that have stuck out to me the most, but these are the top 13 I feel the ones you should pursue. Two, I'm not going to go into much detail of them because I've already made videos about them, so see those if you want more depth. These are quick little final thoughts. Three, I am not including the haunted mask. Oh, come on. We all know the haunted mask is the best book of the series. It has the best characterization, the best story, the best monster, and the best climax that can be best attributed to Stein writing from his own experiences as a child. The fact you can still remember Carly Beth at all is an indicator of how good this book is. Finally, these are all my subjective opinions and not objective fact. Except what I said about the haunted mask. So, without further ado, in alphabetical order, let's kick things off with Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns. While a haunted mask best captures the feeling of Halloween, Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns is a very close second. The plot fits right with the Halloween spirit. A group of friends are off to trick some kids that ruin Halloween for them on the night of Halloween itself. But along the way, get captured by two strange pumpkin heads. The best reason why this is on the list? Stein took the two biggest things Halloween is recognized for, jack o lanterns and trick-or-treating, and turned it into something horrifying. It's a really enjoyable ride that captures the fun and creepy atmosphere that Goosebumps books are known for. Calling all creeps! This book could have been so much more. A story about a bully kid discovering monsters in his school, planning to turn everyone into monsters, but no one believes him because he's such a loser. This still stands as one of my most disappointing books among the series, because the book just doesn't go into the details to really hit home with its themes, staying within the Goosebumps formula. But I'll be remiss to ignore just how interesting and disturbing the ending is. It does just enough to show it could have been a great horror story, but it just doesn't go all the way. But damn that ending! The Girl Who Cried Monster a girl discovers her librarian is a monster, but nobody believes her because she keeps pretending that monsters are real. It's a classic setup that pays off in all the right ways. One can't help but point out how the librarian telling Lucy to stop reading horror stories and to read real literature is pretty much Stein's swipe at all the parents trying to keep their kids from reading his books. But we still have an intense story. Every time Lucy goes back to the library, you really wonder if she'll make it out this time. And that twist. I've made a lot of critiques that most Goosebumps book twists aren't always good, but this has one of the best twists in the entire series. I'm so jealous I couldn't have seen it sooner. How I Learned to Fly So this is probably the most un-Goosebumps like book in the series. It's about a kid who discovers flight. That's it. There isn't that much in terms of horror, but this book does look at the horrors of fame when the kid who can fly gets discovered. Unlike Calling All Creeps, this one actually dives more into the horror that fame can do to people around you and yourself. It's not what you think of when you think Goosebumps, but it provides itself with a great tale that I think even adultery. And that says something. How to Kill a Monster. Now this one really impressed me. Two kids living with their grandparents in the middle of nowhere are locked in the house when a monster escapes. The premise alone is interesting, but when the monster escapes, it becomes a roller coaster ride that seems to never end till you die. I don't want to say much, but I'm still shocked this never got a sequel. The idea for it is so there, but for whatever reason, we just don't have one. Just be sure to run. A lot. Because the last thing you want is to get caught. I live in your basement. Now this one came out of nowhere for me. It's common to think with franchises that the closer to the end of the series, the worse they're going to be. 
Now for this one. After getting hit in the head, a kid wakes up to find that something is living in his basement, but no one believes him. Things get more complicated when he seems to keep waking up from dreams. So what exactly is reality? Two words. Body horror. I was never more horrified than when I read some of the most disgusting body horror I've read in a Goosebumps book. I can't believe this is even in a Goosebumps book, but it works so well. The ending is a bit confusing, but oh my, this one knows how to turn your guts inside out. Monster Blood. Do I need to say anything else? Do I really need to say anything else? This one's a classic. Kid discovers a toy called Monster Blood, but it turns out it's alive and eats anything. It's a classic retelling of the blob. Evan is a good relatable character, and it has one of the craziest climaxes the series has to offer. What's that name, man? Monster Blood. Blood from a monster that itself becomes a monster. Awesome. A great read. Just after that, avoid all the sequels, because they suck. A Night in Terror Tower. Now this one has one of the best shock reveals in the series. Two kids are off on vacation with their family in London, but when they encounter a strange man in black, they quickly discover that their parents are nowhere to be found, almost like they don't exist. This one is all about that build up. The payoff doesn't quite match what it is building up to, but the middle where the two kids are lost in a strange place and they can't even remember their last names is nail biting. A PR journey over the destination read. Night of the Living Dummy 3. This one might piss some people off. Most Goosebumps sequels really aren't that good, but Night of the Living Dummy 3, over all the other Living Dummies, is the entry I enjoy the most. It's all the same plot. Kids discover Slappy, say the magic words, and then strange stuff happens that begin to break the family apart. Honestly, it wasn't till 3 that it really clicked to me just how much of an ass Slappy is. He's always been an ass, but the family dynamic here is what interested me the most. Seeing how this mad, evil thing destroyed everything, taking what was once a peaceful household into a battlefield. Pretty much it's taking what the other two have done, but it feels like Stein worked out the kinks to give us a scary time with the franchise's mascot. Also this. And then his left hand shot straight up and slapped me in the face. <laughs> Classic. One day at Horrorland. Family finds themselves in an amusement park where the monsters are real and the attractions can kill you. I don't think I need to say much after that. It's a great testament to Stein's imagination, seeing all the different and disturbing park rides. The stakes are high, the fears are genuine, and the ending is a great reveal. It's also the entry that kind of becomes the center of the Goosebumps universe. Just look at the Horrorland book series. There isn't that much else to say, but to have fun. And please, no pinching. A shocker on Shock Street. Like Horrorland, this too is a great look at Stein's imagination. This time, two kids go to test run a new ride based on their favorite horror film franchise. But the monsters on it might not be the animatronics they think they are. Again, part of the enjoyment is seeing all the different monsters. Some being parodies of franchises and others their own creation. This one kept me on the edge of my seat as the kids were seeing their favorite things turn into their worst nightmare. It's a ride that once it starts, won't let you go. Also, without a doubt, one of the most depressing endings in a Goosebumps book. Stay out of the basement. Alright, half of this is pure nostalgia. The cover for this book has always intrigued me as a kid. The kids discover that their scientist father is starting to act strange, always working in the basement. But when they go in, they discover a truly horrifying reveal. The thing I love about this the most is the fact that the father is the villain. Not some external monster, but someone you always see every day. Not to mention the horrors he's doing is happening right below your feet. I love stories that take the everyday and make it terrifying. And stay out of the basement makes sure you will never go down again. And lastly, The Werewolf of Fever Swamp. I don't know what it is, but this book is one of my favorites in the series. A kid has just moved to the remote area of Florida and begins to hear strange howls in the woods. He goes out to explore and nothing good comes out of it. For me, I love how simple it is. It's a classic mystery story. Who is the werewolf? And you really don't know. The book gives enough suspects to make each of them suspicious. You can't just guess because it does a great job hiding who it is. It's intriguing, fascinating, and one of the funnest you could have in a Goosebumps book. Plus, nothing can beat that cover. And there you go. Those are my picks. What about you, Internet? 
What are your favorite Goosebumps books? And now it's time to wrap things up. Thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart for watching me. I hope to provide you with the same next year. If you have a suggestion of what I should review, let me know. I'm making the list right now. Many of you have given me such interesting suggestions, so put them in fast or you will have to wait till 2016. Until then, Merry Christmas to all and have a nice day. See you in January with 